Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So the other day I filmed my decorate with me video where I put up my Christmas tree and decorated for Christmas. And in that video, I told you guys that I made quite a big order with Hobbycraft and um, it took forever to get here. So we didn't arrive in time for that video, but I have a couple of little kind of Christmassy DIY kind of decory bits that I want to do. So I thought why not kind of film it and share it with you guys. So yeah, I think I've got like four different things that I want to do. I'm not even sure. But yeah, just really, really simple, easy, affordable DIY Christmassy projects. So first thing, not really a DIY project at all, but I did speak before about um, how I was gonna be wrapping my presents this year. So I actually got two rolls of this from Hobbycraft. This is just their normal craft paper. It's eight meters by 70 centimeters. So there is a lot of paper here. And when I ordered it, it was on offer. I think it was two rolls for six pounds. Um, so you get quite a lot for your money. And one of the reasons I wanted to use that is firstly, because you can use it all year round. It's not just for Christmas, but also it's fully recyclable. You can reuse it, all of that jazz. So it's a much more kind of sustainable form of wrapping, I guess, than like really glittery kind of wrapping paper. And I thought it would look really nice. So I have been wrapping it. I'll show you like um, a few presents that I've already wrapped. I've been wrapping it with twine and ribbon. So I got some more twine from Hobbycraft. The other one I've been using is literally, you can buy a massive reel of it from B&Q for like a quid. And then I've also been adding a little bit of ribbon just to add a bit of color to it. So this one's from Tiger and it's just like a nice kind of natural style ribbon with some hearts on it. That was really affordable as well. And then the thing that I have to share with you guys again, because I honestly think this is so cool. So I picked these up off of Etsy. They're from a brand called, a company called Home Sewn and they are plantable present labels. So I shared this in my other video, but I just have to share it again. So I don't know if you can see, but there's actually seeds inside the labels. So every present I'm gonna be giving is gonna have one of these labels, obviously with the person's name on it, and they can plant it after they use it rather than just throwing it away. So it's kind of like a little gift in itself, I guess. Um, and it's like a little surprise as to what the plants are gonna be. So I thought that was pretty cool. And now the first thing that I'm gonna make is actually a snowflake garland. So I said this year, my theme was gonna be a little bit more like kind of Nord key, more kind of whites, woods, things like that. So I ordered a pack of these. There are 21 wooden snowflakes in here, all different kind of sizes. And this was three pound for a pack. So I had ordered these originally to put them on my tree, but now that I've already done my tree, I don't feel like it needs anything else on it. So what I'm gonna do is actually create a little garland. And I'm thinking of hanging it in um, the window in our kitchen because we don't really do any outdoor decorations. So I thought it'd be nice to kind of have a little decoration in the window that you can see from inside and out. So you don't need much for this. Obviously I've got my wooden stars from Hobbycraft. Um, I think I'm gonna do hopefully a couple of like vertical ones, like ones that literally just hang straight down rather than a garland that goes like that. I don't know if I have enough stars for that so we'll have to see how we get on. Um, and then I have some white kind of thin yarn. This is just left over from a previous project, but I thought this would look really nice against the kind of wood tone. Scissors, obviously to cut the yarn. And then I'm just simply gonna be gluing them on with a hot glue gun. So this is just a mini glue gun from Hobbycraft as well. Although I'm pretty sure you can buy the exact same one on Amazon. And the glue sticks that I use are these ones. Um, which are also from Amazon. I just bought a huge box because they're quite affordable. So yeah, I'm just gonna kind of try and lay stuff out, make a plan as to what I'm actually gonna do and measure out my yarn and then just get gluing.
Right, and here is what they look like. So I've just hung them on the door for now because I thought it'd be easier to show you guys that way. But I'm gonna spread them out a little bit more and hang them in the window, I think. So the pack worked out pretty well, actually. So I went in a pattern of small, medium, small, large, small, medium, small. And yeah, it worked out pretty well. I got three strands doing it that way. Um, and yeah, I thought that was plenty. So the way that I did it is I literally just sort of hot glued that to the back. So obviously if you do see the back of that, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it's not as nice as the front, but you could always buy another pack and kind of um, stick another snowflake on the back, if that makes sense, so that you wouldn't see the ribbon glued on at all. Um, but yeah, that was really, really affordable. I mean, I literally just paid three pounds for the stars and I've got like a little garland and everything else I just had anyway. So a pretty affordable little Christmas garland. Right, so I definitely feel like I started with the easiest project to kind of just ease my way in. And now I'm gonna do the one which I am most excited about, but it's probably also the most difficult out of all of them. So I've said this before, but this year I wanted to create some really nice kind of ceramic personalized Christmas tree ornaments. Um, I'll put up some inspo pictures. I was gonna order some from Etsy, but I couldn't find anything that was exactly the right style the size that I wanted. So I just thought I would try and create some myself first. So I'm gonna be creating um, two circle ones, one for me, one for Steve, with our names kind of embossed on them. And then I'm also gonna be doing two bones, one for Milo and one for Rocky. And then my sister also, when she heard that I was doing this, she um, said that that was a really nice idea. So I'm gonna do some for her as well. So I'm gonna do one for her, one for her husband, and then they are actually in the process of getting a dog. So I'll do one for their new dog as well. So I've never worked with clay, so I'm really just dubious. I don't really know what to expect. But I picked up this clay from Hobbycraft. It's white air drying clay. I have no idea if that's even the right one. This was only £3.80. And then to do stamp the names on them, I actually picked up these also from Hobbycraft. So these were only £2 for the whole set. And they're just like rubber stamps, really. So I can use them for other stuff after this as well. But that was £2 for the whole set. And they have different options of fonts as well. But I just went for a really kind of simple block font because I thought that'd be it would just look the best that way so all in all this has cost me five pounds eighty to hopefully do quite a few ornaments um fingers crossed they turn out well I don't really know how I'm going to do this it's just trial and error basically I don't even have a rolling pin I'm just going to cut some of this off and I've got Steve has um what's this called sparkling water I've stolen one of his sparkly waters to use as a rolling pin I'm just going to roll it flat I don't even have any cookie cutters. So for the round ones, I managed to find a really good size round lid from the recycling. So I'm gonna use that to just stamp out the um, circle ones. Our teaspoons are also kind of have a round end. So I'm gonna use those to poke a little hole in to put like a string through. And then for the dog bone ones, um, really the easiest thing to do would be to buy a dog bone shaped cookie cutter, which you can do. I was just being really stingy and just couldn't be bothered because I don't bake. <laughs> I would never ever use that again. So I'm probably gonna draw out a dog bone um, and then cut it out and use it as a template. And I've got like a little, a little knife. I'll just kind of cut it out, fingers crossed.
Okay, so here's what I've gotten up to. Um, so I've done the ones for my sister and her husband and their dog. So this is so much more fiddly than I thought it'd be, but I am enjoying it. So I've just been rolling it out onto this cling, literally just to protect the table. Ugh, having cookie cutters would literally be so much easier for this. So if you have cookie cutters, yeah, use them. Um, but yeah, I've just been using that and then that was my little template for the bone. I found that I needed to use water to stop things sticking. So being able to dip the knife into the water really helped to be able to cut it out properly. And then I transferred it onto this, which is just baking paper. Um, and I've been using water and like my fingers just to smooth everything out. The same with, where's my teaspoon? Putting a hole in it with the teaspoon. Um, I just put it in the water so it doesn't stick to the teaspoon. But I've had to go through them one by one and like completely smooth them out. They're definitely gonna look a little bit kind of rust key, I guess. Um, they're not gonna be perfect. The most annoying thing is basically these little rubber stamps, the camera won't even focus on them, but they're not like deep enough. Um, so you can't really read them enough. I was hoping that I could literally just leave them white, but I'm thinking that once they're dry, that I'm gonna go in um, the letters with just like a slightly darker shade, just to make it pop a little bit more, or maybe with like gold or something like that. I know my sister has a lot of gold on her tree. So yeah, I might sort of add a little bit of paint on there just to make them stand out a little bit. But apparently it takes 24 to 72 hours for this to dry. So I'm gonna have to check back in with you guys when they're dry. Okay, so this is how the decorations turned out. I'm filming it literally right by the window so you can see properly. Um, so these are our ones. There's Rocky, Steve, Milo, and me. So I like the different kind of shapes. And actually the bone shapes turned out pretty well. So I just used a mother of pearl paint for our one. Um, and then I did those little kind of paint splats as well, just to give it more of a kind of ceramic vibe. And then this string was just left over from a previous project. In hindsight, this was actually a lot more difficult than I thought it'd be. And they look a lot more kind of homemade than I was hoping. I thought I'd get like a kind of cleaner finish on them, but I'm still really happy with them. The letter stamps weren't the best. Um, and as you can see, they've kind of got blocky kind of indents in them and the names aren't as clear as I wanted them to be so if I was to do them again I definitely use um, a different kind of letter stamp just to get a cleaner finish otherwise I would just probably use a normal stencil and just paint it on so for our ones I went with the mother of pearl because it suits our theme a lot more but then my sister's ones I actually did in gold and I have to admit I think the gold does look better than the mother of pearl Annoyingly, I think I put a little bit too much water on them because their names on the circle ones aren't as clear as I'd hoped, but their little puppies one, Luna, hers turned out really nicely, actually. It's like really nice and clear, and I feel like the gold has a lot more contrast against the white, and then I just tied theirs off with a little bit of twine so that they can put whatever colour ribbon or whatever they want on it. And I've just literally chucked it in a glossy box. I'm going to see them this weekend. So I will give them to the men to put on their tree. But let me chuck these on our tree now and I'll show you what they look like.
Okay, so my next little DIY that I want to do is my Christmas wreath. So I already have a Christmas wreath. I got this quite a few years ago. Um, and to be honest, it's just not really my style anymore. It's very sort of like brown, red, green. It's just not what I would buy if I was buying one today, but it's still got some life left in it. I mean, it's not the best quality, so I'll probably get a new one next year. Um, and like I've said previously, we think we'll probably be moving in the next year or so and i feel like stuff like this will just get wrecked when we move anyway so there's no point buying one to then move house so i thought i might do a little bit of a kind of upcycle um a little touch up on this so what have i got i've got some paint basically <laughs> so i've got some acrylic white paint i've also got um some mother of pearl acrylic paint so i think i'm gonna try and go for a bit more of like a flocked vibe so all of the red berries i'll probably be painting them with the kind of like mother of pearl one and then i think on the pine cones i might just kind of dry brush it with a brush so just dip, dip the brush in a little bit get a tiny bit of paint on and just give it a really kind of quick dusting um so i hope this is going to turn out okay there are some like frosted ones in here i think i'm just going to leave those as they are and just tackle the red ones bit risky because this could turn out badly but at the end of the day if it turns out badly i will just buy a new one so i'm trying to give this a new lease of life so we'll see how it goes And here is the final wreath. Do you know what? I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. It turned out a lot better than I thought it would. So it's just kind of taken back all these like reds and browns. So obviously, like I said, I didn't want to completely paint it. I just kind of wanted it to look a little bit more kind of flocked. So I literally just put the tiniest amount of paint on my brush and just kind of gently brushed it over i also did some little bits on the kind of greenery as well there um, and then all of the little berries are now kind of mother of pearl so yeah i just feel like it's made it a bit more modern there are gaps in the reef so that was pre this video where obviously a pine cone's fallen off um so yeah this definitely needs to be replaced eventually but i think for this year that's looking a lot better than it was. Right guys, I'm onto my last little DIY project now. So I've just put the reef on the door um, and honestly that took me literally like, I don't know, five, 10 minutes. Um, not long at all. This last one, I saved this to last because I wasn't sure what to do with it. So I picked this up off of Hobbycraft. It's a 3D paper mache star. Hobbycraft do loads of like paper mache stuff. So it's this kind of card objects. There's something in there. Anyway, um, yeah, so it's one that you could hang, but it's like a completely kind of 3D one, which actually I wasn't expecting. I thought it was just gonna be 3D on the front. So I was thinking, oh, I could put it on the top of my tree. I could do something with it. I don't know. I do quite like the kind of cardboardy effect but I think it looks a little bit too raw. This is a 30 centimeter star, so it's like a decent size, um, and it was only three pounds. 
And what I was thinking is that you guys know that my kind of decor style is very like, it's a lot of white and black. And this year on our tree, we've added loads of like wooden stuff. And I thought it'd be good to do something to tie in my kind of existing decor to like my more kind of Nordic style tree. And actually I saw this, there's a house account and I can't remember what it's called, but I'll find you the picture and I'll put it up here. Um, there's a house account I follow and she's been doing loads of really, really clever kind of Christmassy DIY hacks. And she did this one with these toy soldiers and I thought these looked incredible. And I literally just saw them this morning. So I may go and try and find some identical and do the same project as her, but I just, let's face it guys i love matte black everything so i thought you know what i'm just going to paint this black it's going to be a far more kind of edgy christmas decoration it's going to tie in my existing decor with my christmas decor so all i'm literally going to do is just i'm going to trim oh do i want it hanging or not i might leave that on actually i might leave the little tie on but i'm really plain and simple just going to paint it black and i think it's actually going to transform it. So this is how the star turned out. I'm actually really happy that I did it black. So as you can see, our tree is right next to our black sideboard. And I thought that would just be really nice to kind of chuck in with the presents somewhere and kind of break it up a little bit. The only thing is that I actually used a matte black furniture paint on this um, because I just had it lying around, but it's not actually gone matte black. So in hindsight, I wish I'd have just used a black acrylic paint because that would have gotten a more of a flat finish. But I didn't have quite enough to do the star, but I did actually keep the little twine on it as well so that I can hang it up if I wanted to. But I thought it was really pretty. Right, guys, I have literally just been trying to chase the light around this house just to film this outro because it's getting dark so so early now but i hope you guys have enjoyed those really quick and easy little kind of like christmasy diy decor bits let me know what you think down in the comment section below if you have enjoyed this video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it really supports my channel and if you haven't already subscribed don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn your notifications on so you never miss an upcoming video i'll leave some links down below for some of the bits that i did use in today's video as well but until next time i will see you guys later